Carbohydrate is the primary fuel we need for endurance performance, but how much of it do you need to perform at your best? Despite the fact that dosing carbohydrates is really critical for getting the best out of your performance, not all athletes understand the ins and outs of how much carbohydrate they're going to need per hour for different activities and different intensities. This is partly because there's a lot of confusion in the sports nutrition market. We've been bombarded with messages for years and years from lots of different brands telling us about special types of carbohydrate in different products in order to differentiate themselves from one another. Now, whilst the different types of carbohydrate are important to a degree in products, what's far more important is how much you take per hour. That's the number one factor that we've got to focus on. If there's a hierarchy of importance of, of you know, carbohydrate intake, dosing or how much you take per hour is probably more important than what kind of carbohydrate you're taking. Also, when we get into the, the nuts and bolts of this, we're going to be making some assumptions which are very important to note. The first one is that what follows assumes that you're starting a bout of exercise well fueled with robust glycogen stores. Glycogen is where carbohydrates stored in your body, mainly in your muscles and your liver, and we're going to assume that you've had a carbohydrate rich meal a couple of hours before doing whatever activity you're doing so that you're fully topped up. The other thing that's really important is that this, um, the, the recommendations for carbohydrates per hour that follow are based on the idea of optimizing performance. And optimizing performance means going as hard as you can for a given duration. It doesn't mean just bimbling around on a steady training session where your carbohydrate fueling needs are gonna be a lot less than they are when you're going flat out because your body can burn and access fat at lower intensities. So with those assumptions parked, we can get into the, the main bit of the topic, which is starting to look at how much carbohydrate you need for different durations of activity. For activities lasting less than one hour, the science is pretty clear that you're not going to need to intake carbohydrate to perform at your best. This is because your glycogen stores will have you covered for this sort of duration and you're probably going at such a high intensity that taking much in is going to be difficult anyway. The one exception to this might be in activities which are close to an hour in duration, so more than about 45 minutes, that are extremely flat out, where having a small carbohydrate drink or a mouth rinse with a carbohydrate drink has been shown to, to give some marginal benefits. But in general, less than an hour, you're not going to need to take in carbohydrate to get the best out of your performance. When the duration of activity goes above an hour and closer to two hours, taking in carbohydrates definitely starts to help our performance. And the range that we want to be taking in is somewhere between 30 and 60 grams an hour. 30 grams an hour at the lower end is probably more applicable for slightly shorter durations within this window and if you're not working quite as hard. When you're working flat out for nearly two hours and if you're a very fit athlete you might benefit from taking as much as 60 grams. And to give you an idea of what that looks like in terms of standard energy products, Energy gels tend to have around 30 grams of carbohydrate in. Half a litre of an isotonic sports drink has about 30 grams. So it's either one or two energy gels or half or one litre of sports drink. That's going to keep us fueled and performing at our best in activities up to about two hours. Once exercise goes much beyond two hours, then taking in even more carbohydrates than 60 grams can be beneficial for some people. Um, basically, there seems to be a bit of a dose-response relationship at this point where the more carbohydrate you can take in, the higher the intensity of exercise you can sustain for longer. Now, figures up to 90 grams an hour are what normally quoted as being the sort of upper ceiling for carbohydrate intake. That's based on the idea that transporters in your gut can can absorb about 60 grams of glucose per hour and another 30 grams of fructose. So this is where the type of carbohydrate starts to matter a little bit because it can make it easier for your body to, to take in large amounts. There's lots of anecdotal evidence out there these days that really elite athletes can take in even more than 90 grams and especially through training the gut to do so, they can, they can tolerate much higher doses of carbohydrate. There's a bit of individualization comes into it here, but basically when you get beyond this two to three hour window and you're going very hard, generally a little bit more carbohydrate is better, certainly north of 60 grams per hour. Of course, when you're doing really ultra distance activities, 
different factors come into play. It's not just about carbohydrates per hour. We're not, we're probably going to start eating real foods and taking in things with fat and protein and other calories in them as well. And that's a bit of a wider discussion, but principally the way to think about this is that, you know, at short durations, no carbohydrate, moderate durations, 30 grams, 60 grams is the, the sweet spot for middling durations. And then in longer duration activities, it could be 60, 90, or even 90 plus grams per hour. If you're trying to figure out what the sort of ideal amount for you is going to be per hour based on your activity and intensity, we've got a handy carb calculator on the product pages of our website, which is worth having a look at. Now, one thing that's pretty common when athletes use the carb calculator or they start looking at these numbers, like especially 60, 90 grams of carbohydrate an hour, those numbers are often higher than what they're doing at present and you shouldn't be put off by that. It's, it's not unusual for athletes to be fueling on the light side compared with the amount of carbohydrate that they might benefit from taking per hour. Now, what that means is there's potentially room for improvement in performance and recovery for sessions and races when you're working very hard for long durations. There is an element of having to ease your numbers up if you're only taking in low amounts at the moment, and so training the gut slowly with small increases in carbohydrate rather than just dumping a lot more on it in one go is advisable but in general don't be put off if the numbers seem quite high it just means that you've probably got room to improve your performance if you can get those numbers up so once you've got a handle on how much carbohydrate you're going to need per hour the next logical question to ask yourself is what type of product or what format of carbs is going to work best in different scenarios.